So controls were then tested on like basic level design concepts. So in our little world of uh, green tiles and red square, I made levels where there would be a single tile, and I would be like, oh, I want to jump off the wall and land on that tile exactly. Okay, I can do that. Now I want to jump off that tile, hit the side of the tile, and then be able to go to another tile. And I did these little iterations of things that I wanted. I wanted to be able to land right in the middle of two saws after jumping off this, this, this giant platform. I wanted to be able to do all these things. And once I got all that done, the controls were locked in. They were not changed from the initial... All this took about three months, by the way. So the initial three months of development for the controls, that was locked in. It did not change for the rest of development. And there was reasons for that. So. The reason is you have to design levels for this, and if you're designing levels and then controls and then updating your controls and go back to your levels, then it's uh, you're going to get in situations where stuff that you did in the beginning doesn't feel as good as it used to with the old control scheme, and instead needs to be updated to the new one, and then you're in this weird cycle and it sucks. So, for me, boy, there are a couple concepts. Well, actually, a couple meaning two, and there are two really basic concepts that we went through in. I, now I'm looking at slides, basically one concept, so. <laughs> uh, levels don't push the user beyond what's comfortable. Now, the best way to illustrate this, this is my favorite level in the game. It's called the Saltzman. Or, yeah, it's Saltzman or Box Trigger, I don't remember. The Dark World, it's one of those. But that jump right there, that is where you start when the level starts. If you jump straight up, hold run, and go into the right direction, you will land where that arrow is, and you'll see that you just clear that tile, and that feels good, because it's like, oh wow, I made this jump, and it was hard, and I just barely made it. You did just barely make it, but it's a barely made that makes sense. This is an example, same exact level, with one more tile on top of it. Now, this jump is still possible, but as hopefully this animated GIF will show you, oh my god, it's so slow. <laughs> I don't know why it's that slow, but you see he hits on the side, and comes up and actually lands on top of the platform after hitting the wall. And that does not feel good. It feels like a mistake, and uh, we work to avoid that at all times. Um, the other thing is, uh, when it comes to Meat Boy and people describing its controls and how, what the game is, they often say it's a retro game with pixel-perfect controls and pixel-perfect jumps, and that is false. There is not a single pixel-perfect jump in Meat Boy at all. Uh, this, I, I drew all these in paint, by the way, like last night. So. Uh, um, I don't even know why I put the blue square there. Like, you can obviously see there's a pit there. <laughs> to be fair, this is the first one I did. So, um, you can see here, the red line represents the earliest you can jump with uh, by holding run, because the purpose of this level is to teach you that you need to hold run in order to go over large gaps when you're jumping. Uh, the red line represents the earliest you can jump and still make it over, and you make it over by hitting that wall and jumping back on top of it. Most people will jump where that green line goes, and if you hold run all the way, you will actually hit bandage girl. Like, you're not going to land on the platform, you're going to land on bandage girl. And you can see, that's not a pixel, that's like 96 pixels, so it's not a pixel perfect to make that. Another kind of example of this, there's two ways to get up on that platform, and looking at that without my sweet little arrows, not really arrows, lines, uh, you would think, wow, that's a really hard jump that you have to time perfectly. And no, it's not. Like, you can go up through the little, uh, the, the light green line. I don't know, I should have done two distinct colors of lines. <laughs> but you can go up through the fan, and you will land anywhere in between those two those two tiles up there, and that's that's 64 pixels, I don't know, I don't really do stuff in pixels, but um, you can land anywhere up there, or you can take the advanced route, which is wall jump off that thing, which I actually think is easier. You wall jump off that tile to the left, green line all the way to the end. Either way, you're not landing on the edge of the tile, and you're not landing on the edge, like, all the way to the right, or the edge all the way to the left. You're landing anywhere in between those two tiles. Another little quick example, same thing with the red line, you'll hit the blah blah blah, and yeah. So, uh, the two lines represent the kind of, uh, the range in which you can actually jump and make this large jump. So, nothing is pixel perfect. So, we applied those to all 300 million levels that are in the game, and we shipped the game. And, uh, it was a hit. 
Um, and by the way, I didn't do the background right on that, so that's what those little line things are. But, uh, yeah, it was a hit, but the fans wanted more. I made this image, too. Uh, um, and that's great to have a game that comes out and people want more, but it is also exhausting after you've killed yourself to put a game out. So, give you a rundown of what fans wanted. Uh, let's see. When's it coming to iOS? Can I play this on iOS? Will I get an Android version? I'd love this on my phone. When's it coming to iPhone? I bet you're running. I need it on my phone. This would be awesome. When's it going on Android? Is the Android port in the works? Is it finally, is the WiiWare version happening? <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Meat Boy came out in 2010. 2011, GDC comes around, and uh, this is, by the way, the official GDC 2011. <laughs> <laughs> um, so GDC comes around, and uh, I was I was given a post mortem talk, and all of this stuff was hitting me a lot because the iPhone craze is still crazy around that time. Like Mega Man was on the iPhone with the, the controls, like was mentioned in the in the last talk, and it just feels terrible. It's awful. Like Sonic was on there, Street Fighter Four. I think I did a whole talk about this at GDC where I made fun of it and they pulled my game from Apple. But um, <laughs> so you go to GDC and like I, a lot of you, if you've gone to GDC, it's a very social thing. And you go to parties and you meet people, but uh, I'm not very social, so you know why would I go to a party? <laughs> uh, so. I kind of just uh, was, was, was stewing all that inside my hotel room. And by the way, this is a real picture of me in my hotel room. Um, I was kind of stewing on that, and I felt like a big, dumb idiot because it took me so long to take, hey, I want Meat Boy on my phone, not to be, oh, you're dumb, you want Super Meat Boy on your phone, it's not going to work, to, oh, they want a game that feels like Meat Boy and they want a game that makes them feel like they feel when they beat levels of Meat Boy. Basically, they want a good platformer on their phone that is the caliber of Meat Boy. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So I'm in my, uh, my hotel room here. I have my laptop. I have the Meat Boy code, so I prototyped. Uh, this isn't really, I made this last night too, but this is basically what it looked like in the Meat Boy code. I made a Meat Boy that would just run and all he could do was jump. And when you jumped off the wall, he would change direction, go the opposite direction. And I played through this little level, and I'm like, this could work. So I'm like, but will it work for everything? So again, this, this is the actual level from the game, and I was able to play through this level with that control scheme. And I'm thinking, hmm, this could maybe be something. So it did become something. And uh, it's basically a Meat Boy game with two buttons called Meat Boy Forever, and uh, it's kind of a bad name, but who wants to call it Meat Boy 2, right? Mm -hmm. So, two buttons. Why would you make a precision platform with two buttons? Well, I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over. It's kind of boring to me. So I wanted a challenge, and this has been an amazingly fun challenge uh, that I'm very proud of. So, this slide is meant to echo a previous slide because the, uh, the process of designing Super Meat Boy Forever controls is identical to Meat Boy. Uh, controls are the first thing I did, physics, uh, very little was done to hold the player's hands, uh, level concepts, locked it in, we start building levels. So, two buttons means you have to take away a lot from the player, um, but with a game like Meat Boy, it has to still feel like Meat Boy, otherwise then it's just a weird, just terrible cash-in game and who wants to make that. So, how do we boil down controls? Well. Through all of Meat Boy's, I believe, 320 levels, there is one level that punishes you for running. Uh, the rest of the level, and that's 7-2, it's in uh, Cotton Alley. Uh, the rest of the levels uh, don't punish you at all for uh, uh, not running, or, or, I'm sorry, they don't punish you for running. Uh, it's almost required in every level, and uh, it, it's just kind of what you do. Like, you, my wife actually has terrible thumb hand when she plays Meat Boy because she's just running all the time. So the first boil down is, well, it's just going to make him money, er, money. Make him run me. I wasn't supposed to say that. So, so that's nothing revolutionary. Lots of games, cannonballs, uh, tons of auto runners, there's a whole thing about it. So. <laughs> the other thing was take out swipe and motion controls, because that's, um, we've shown this game at PAX a couple times on touch screens. It's very frustrating to see people with this game 
and do this, and I don't know what their brain is telling them to do, to do this, but they're doing it, so that doesn't make sense for the game, so just take it out. We can, we can very much do something that, that feels like Meat Boy without doing motions or anything like that. So, since you already change directions in Meat Boy when you jump off the wall, it's just something to kind of lean into. Uh, don't need any like little poles that he swings around or any special things that change his direction. Instead, we rely on external factors, which are level design, which we'll get to. But since we've taken two buttons, I don't want to waste one of those buttons as a change direction button, so just use something else to change the direction. Now, because we don't have back and forth, left and right, up and down, we have to take away a lot of lateral control, lateral and vertical control from the player. So, I wanted to give some back with kind of an air dash, sort of like um, Mega Man X has a pretty cool air dash. And you can, uh, these slides are running way too slow for this, but you'll see it in super slow motion. He jumps, right? And then he's gonna hit the saw and then he rockets forward. That gives you a little bit of lateral movement with only one button press, which is the jump button again. So that basically acts as your double jump. Um, the other thing, we need more vertical control, like we need to be able to get back to the ground faster because no longer can you do the jump off one thing and land on another uh, because, you know, if you jump, like you can do it, but it's much harder because you're having to time exactly how much pressure you're putting into your jump. So, make a dive, and the dive works as you would expect. He just dives back to the ground to give him a little bit more of that vertical control that you're missing by not being able to swivel back and forth. So, we have punches and we have kicks, so why not hit some stuff, because hitting stuff is a lot of fun. And with that, uh, it actually opens up the movement kind of stuff, which we will get to later. Um, but yeah, so, again, all those controls are locked in, and we basically have a definition of how Meat Boy moves within his world. So we need to expand on that. And you know, again, it's pretty much the same thing. You don't push them beyond. There's no crazy jumps where you have to uh, do something that doesn't feel natural to just hitting two buttons. Um, uh, again, no pixel perfect jumps because those are not fun. Like, they're just not fun. Uh, we don't create any levels that need timing or waiting because uh, the, the purpose of the game is he's always moving, so to break that up kind of goes against the spirit of the game. So, nothing that's going to like be a little pause block like you had in Mario Run or anything like that. It's very much, we embrace that you're not going to be able to stop and wait, so we design around that and we haven't had any troubles. Like, <laughs> we're, we're not missing that. So again, wall, wall jumps to change direction, so that's, that's where we give you more of that lateral control. And we make the levels interesting by wanting you to change directions in ways with different wall jumps that are placed throughout the level. And the biggest thing, though, is because the controls are locked in, because they are heavily based off of Meat Boy controls, like everything just feels like Meat Boy. So we just make Meat Boy levels, and they match with the controls. So, and by the way, that's not supposed to be an equal, because that doesn't make any sense. It's supposed to be a yield. So, marriage of these controls and level concepts yield this kind of interesting concept of emergence and controls. Here's some examples. So, in Meat Boy, if he'll get over there, you can see that's about how high he jumps, just by himself. Now, if you go to a wall and you jump, he jumps much higher. The reason for that is when he jumps, when he slides down a wall, I didn't want him to basically go the rate of gravity. I wanted him to feel like he was sticking to the wall, and I did that by just putting force on him as he is on the wall. Well, the added side effect of that is he jumps a little higher, and we found that out early, and we're like, oh, that feels pretty good. We'll make some levels that do that. Another example of kind of this emergent jump, and this one actually works really good slow motion, is this is what we called an S-jump. And the S-jump works because you have so much lateral control when you jump, you can actually change where the apex of your jump would be just by moving the controller. You basically jump, pull back, and your upward velocity still continues, but you can get around. And you can see here, this level was designed that you jump on that platform and over, because if his wall jump, uh, if he didn't pull back or anything, that wall jump would take him right into the saw. But he actually, in a way, gains more height by not, by pulling back and making kind of S 
curve. Kind of another example of that is if you'll jump. <laughs> you can see he jumps and then you curve back and you, you basically change where the apex of your jump would end. Like you, you, you carve it, you S-jump it. Like those bullets in that wanted movie. Anybody see that one movie? <laughs> they cur I didn't see it, I saw the trailer, but they curved the bullets in the trailer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and that brings us, and I have like a couple seconds, and this is great. Uh, that brings us to what emerges there was in forever. Now, this is a dark world level, but you can see he dives into a guy and then punches out, dives again, up against the wall to change directions, dives down again, and then punches forward, because that gives you your forward movement back again, and you can just sort of continue doing this. And that's one chunk of a level that you beat with two buttons, and it looks intimidating, and I did not plan this when I was making the controls, but it makes sense, so we embrace it. So, kind of final point is, uh, if you want to make a game that feels great, make great controls, then make great levels that complement the controls, because that's what the whole marriage thing, that's why I said marriage, so. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs>